Across the plains of what is now Alberta, Canada, a herd of Chasmosaurus slowly march on their annual migration. In this particular herd, a young male walked along the fringes. He was normally used to being in the centre of the herd, protected by a wall of adults, but he was now old enough that he didn't need their supervision, and felt confident enough to stray away from his family without the fear of attack. As the herd grazed, the juvenile spotted something he once feared. Poking its head out of the underbrush was a feathered dromaeosaur. These carnivores were more than capable of killing a young Chasmosaurus, but wouldn't dare attack a whole herd. And the youngster, with his newfound size and strength, felt confident against the lone predator. He bellowed and charged at the smaller dinosaur, expecting his display to send the spying creature running, but it stood still. Even as he quickly closed the gap between them, the dromaeosaur didn't flinch. Only when it was too late did the adolescent realize his mistake. Out of the low-lying shrub that lay to the sides of the predator burst four more of its kind, heads down and arms tucked in as they quickly encircled the Chasmosaurus before he could make a stop. The coordinated predators barked and snapped at their prey that had run right into their trap. The young herbivore swung his head back and forth trying to intimidate the attackers when he heard the calls of his family. The youngster looked back to them, but to his shock saw they weren't coming to rescue him. They were forming a protective wall around the youngest members of the herd, the same way they used to do for him. One of the dromaeosaurs kicked its foot into the back of the youngster's leg, sinking its large talon to his flesh before immediately pulling its foot back and retreating. Maul moved into attack, but the Chasmosaurus turned tail and ran back towards the herd, but the predators had the speed advantage. Two jumped on his back, though one couldn't get a grip and crashed to the ground. The other sunk its claws on its feet and hands deep into the herbivore's back, cutting him deep before then biting again and again. The youngster closed his eyes in pain. Another of the feathery carnivores latched onto his right shoulder and tried to bite his neck. But the Chasmosaurus lurched his head back to the right side, flattening the smaller dinosaur against him under his large frill. The predator yelped in surprise, and when the Chasmosaurus moved his head again, the Dromaeosaur fell to the ground. More of them nipped at his legs and hide, cunning deep into him, when suddenly they broke off their pursuit, and the one on his back released its grip and darted away. Opening his eyes, the young Chasmosaurus saw he'd reached the herd and two full-sized adults had broken rank and come to his side. With a sense of relief, the now humbled teenage dinosaur looked back and saw the pack of hunters melting into the undergrowth. He had survived his encounter with death, and now stuck close to the herd. His wounds were deep, but not life-threatening. However, because of the youngster's foolishness, the scent of blood now followed the herd, attracting more predators, some far worse than the dromaeosaurs. Hello everyone, and welcome back to the show. Today we will be traveling back 75 million years to examine the species of the week, Chasmosaurus. Chasmosaurus was a medium-sized herbivorous ceratopsian dinosaur that lived in the Lake Cretaceous. It was first discovered in 1898 at Alberta, Canada, but wasn't properly named until 1914. Over 18 specimens have been discovered, including skin impressions. Adults could have grown up to 5 to 6 metres long, stood at 2 metres tall, and weighed between 2 to 4 tonnes. And remember, this is a medium-sized ceratopsin. Like other members of its family, Chasmosaurus had facial horns and a large frill. Its horns were notably smaller than other species, and most likely of little use in defence, and may have used its large beak as an offensive weapon. Then we come to the frill, and though it is large and impressive, you'll note the large holes that would have been covered in skin when the animal was alive. This along with the fact that the frill was quite fragile, meant that it was not great for defense against large predators. With that being said, the size of it would have been great for intimidation, as it could most likely flush blood across its crest to create a more menacing display for predators and rivals, or, on a different note, used to attract potential mates. If its display failed, however, Chasmosaurus is estimated to be able to run of speeds up to 55 kilometers an hour, much like a modern rhinoceros. Chasmosaurus shared its environment with many other ceratopsins, including Centrosaurus, Pentaceratops, Styracosaurus, 
Vagoceratops, and Cynops, which is a lot of similar species living close together. Other dinosaur species include Corythosaurus, Lambrosaurus, Parasaurolophus, Ornithomimus, Experioctops, and two main predators, Desplatosaurus and Gorgosaurus. Ah, uh, Chasmosaurus, or Chas, as I like to call him. Here's a species that takes the adaptation of the shield and spreads it out so thinly that it almost loses its defensive use entirely. But if you can intimidate your foes from attacking you in the first place, and they don't know how fragile your massive shield is, then maybe it was worth it. And of course, if you travel in a herd, that works as well. So what do you think of Chasmosaurus? Do you think it stands out from the many other ceratopsins that it lived with? Or is it a bit of a show-off? Comment down below on what lesser-known dinosaurs you like me to do a video on. Until next time.